How cool does this look? It's a cool. It's a traffic light setup. It's this is very cool. Driving drunk. <laughs> it all look green to me. <laughs> <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back. Another week of Blind Wine Tastings. Big thanks to Sometimes Always, as ever, for helping us out with the wines. If you haven't checked it out already, down below on our Discord link, we actually give out a little discount code that gets you 10% off each of the wines that we taste this week. If you haven't already tried it, get amongst that. Also, be sure to like and subscribe if you haven't already. It really helps us out here at the channel. But, let's get into the wines. Wine numero uno. Be like, this is genuinely cherry red. Like, there's, there's no other way to describe that other than cherry red. I'm expecting it to be light. I'm not expecting it to be one of my dad's red wines, but we'll see what happens. It's not really jumping out of the glass at me. It's just super tight. Got to taste it first. Really delicate and restrained. Okay, a little bit dry, a bit of a drier red. Quite a bit of that fruit flavor coming through, which is always a good thing for someone like me who ultimately kind of likes fruit juice. It has that, like, Piccadilly, Adelaide Hills flavor, like, really high altitude. Wow. That's got acid for days. That's got a lot of acid. Like it's another, I like peel back the layers. It's like an, it's, this is onion wine. It's just definitely one way you peel back the layers and it has this more developed complexity. Middle of the road. It's not doing insane things to me. It's n not offensive at all. It's, but for that reason, I'll be willing to chuck a cool 35 bucks at this and grab three bottles just to see where it takes me. Number two, something with a mild degree of skin contact. This one's looking a little bit yellow, and you know I've got a little bit of favoritism to what it smells like. Chardonnay, you'll be surprised to learn, Lucky. Oh, okay. Very cool, very interesting. There's a um, bit of a bit of oak time, but not too much. A little bit of skin contact, a little bit of lots going on. I won't be surprised if I learn that this has spent a little bit of time in barrel. But nice kind of like uh, stone fruit character that's kind of the core of this. It's yeah, nuts and stone fruit, which is always indicates yumness when it's orange wine. Yeah, it's Chardonnay. <laughs> it's gotta be Chardonnay. Look, it's fun. It's textual, actually. It's remarkably textual. The finish on this wine is is really, really quite pleasant. Similar price point. I'm thinking maybe 35 for this one. Maybe not quite as expensive. A good little wine. Easily drinkable, nice and light and chilled and pretty. And I'll be dropping it about three bottles. Um, I think it's kind of interesting. I'd definitely be, be keen to see it opening up a little bit more. This looks like it's got to be a heat behind it. This is a much thicker red wine than the first one that we tried. Lots of violet characters. A bit lifted kind of uh, acidity. Smells like awesome Pinot, Grenache, something Nouveau or Yovan. Yeah, it's like graphite pencil shaving tannins, which a lot of the time leads Nebbiolo. So this could be Nebbiolo. It's just that, like got a bit of that uh, like grape juice flavor at the start of it, which is something I'm a big fan of. I don't know if you've watched any of the other videos, but. I think it's around about 40 bucks, but if it was 50, I wouldn't knock it back. It's maybe, like it does feel a little bit heavier. Shiraz slash Syrah. But yeah, it's just got this really grenache character that leads me astray from something like Nebbiolo, but it could be somewhere in between. It could be a variety that I have no idea what it is. I would want at least a dozen in my hands yesterday. Irrespective, this is one of those wines. You do want a few in the cellar, you do want a few in the fridge, um, and you do want a few that you might want to gift around to a few mates, uh, take around to a few parties. Moving onwards and upwards, we have what could be accurately described as a very orange wine. Yellow, almost orange. But in isolation, you'd look at this and go, it's a white wine, so we'll see. Yeah, it's super nutty and like crushed cashews and with that like dust of salt. This could be some Jura style, oxidatively handled Chardonnay. It smells really nice. It's really inoffensive, but also quite aromatic, almost perfumey. Like it's just fascinating. Oh. Uh, what am I smelling? I'm smelling something called rancio. I'm smelling something called nuttiness. That's fucking gnarly. I think it's New World, like a New World attempt at what we call like a, a Van John. It's got this cool like peachy grilled nuts. Uh, I have a feeling this could be made in Australia, but whoever's made it has done a bloody bang up job. I would be surprised if this wasn't done in stainless as opposed to oak. Yeah, I'm a huge fan. I've got to leave some of this for the next person, unfortunately, but this is delicious. Dense red, we're gonna get a little bit heavy, a little bit more hectic uh, with this. That's what the kids say these days, getting hectic. This is like very tertiary, very rich and, you know, luxurious, chocolatey. This one also could be Syrah Shiraz. Let's find out. Because if me tasting is gonna figure that out. And we are dense and we are weighty and we are smelling old school, aged and matured. And that's not a bad thing. 
I mean, it looks unfiltered, so it's not like old school. It's pretty put together, it seems. Now, again, mum, if you're watching this, I don't know what these taste like, but a little bit cigarette -y. Like, uh, a bit of that tobacco, sort of like, not nicotine. Nicotine sort of flavour is an addiction. I'm going to be I'm gonna be generous and grab two yeah. bottles. The old sort of leather, um, sort of tobacco, cigar box. Like, cool, man. It's still got a primary sort of fruit core of rich, dense, dark plum. That's fun. Pink, is it rosé? Probably, we haven't had a rosé in a little while. I I love rosé because they're about consuming wine and having fun. I think I'm gonna have fun with this. I think this is really cool. The color of this is so cool. It's like perfectly salmon pink. That's a gorgeous, beautiful, pinpoint accurate, like remarkably, remarkably executed wine. Uh, strawberries and wine tours and regret. I'm getting all of those notes from this. Um, delicious. Cherries, strawberries and cream. This is like a pitch perfect little rosé. Super, super drinkable. This is this is a reflection on the social circles that I keep. But this tastes like a 21st. This is an Adelaide Hills rosé and it is $28 a bottle. We share them around with gusto and that's exactly what I would encourage you to do responsibly. Uh, so let's see what the other guys have done. All right, uh, welcome back. We have uh, a wonderfully sort of amazing color array, don't we, of yeah. wine. Numero yeah. uno, what have we got, Lockie? That's cool. exactly what that's I thought. Size 35. Yeah, it's a 40. We're on, on the money. On yeah, the money. Price is right, it's back. Oh, oh, oh hello. Oh, is that his name? That's his cool. name, isn't it? So who are we Papa got? Papa Pino. Um, Papa Pino from, you said Xavier Goodrich. Xavier Goodrich, I think is his name. Yeah, I'm not too sure. I've not... Uh, Produced by Papa Wineco. In my opinion, that's a very, very good example of Yarra Valley Pinot just yeah. in general. All right, moving on to number two. We've got a, a really cool little textural number. Thinking potentially Chardonnay, some batonage work. You won't going believe on. this. I was also thinking Chardonnay. Whoa. <laughs> you won't believe it. Uh, but it was white wine with texture. I thought Chardonnay. I, all right, Bob, like. Bob Jane all rounder. What, uh, what is it setting us back, Lockie? Ooh, that's some good BJ Jeez. all rounders. Is that, is, that a, is that Sauvignon Blanc? Uh, uh, pricing or is that Chardonnay pricing? No, that is something else. Something else. Something else. What do we got? I've seen these wines around. I love the labels. It's got yeah. three labels on it. <laughs> it does have that. It's not necessary. It's Vermentino. Very cool. Uh, probably the most textual Vermentino I have literally ever encountered. Um, and a really, really class yeah. uh, example of that. At 50 bucks, you are up near Chardonnay territory. Yeah, it's definitely, you know, hard to pick, but uh, I think it's great. Love the label, love the bottle. All right, so first of the bangers of this lineup that I jumped at the chance to get a dozen of, what did you guys think of wine number three? I had 45. I had 30. We are, we are pretty close. We're always in the ballpark. I mean, we weren't close in the last one. We're close we're guessing. Aware. We're not good at guessing the actual price. <laughs> yeah. What have we got, Locke? Cool. All right. Whack. 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 What is it? What is it? What do we got? The Vendum imported little number. We have Raisin de Loupe de France. Raisin de Loupe. Raisin so, de Loupe. Uh, which is a wine a of France. Um, oh, I don't know what this is. This is cool. But uh, it's yummy. Where are they going to find out? Yeah. Do, do what y'all should do and jump on sometimes always. <laughs> and uh, oh, he's he's done. He's just it's done. Grenache Syrah. Hey, dude. Woo! It's Grenache Syrah. One number four. Uh, the next real interesting one for yeah. me that I jumped and pounced with the chance at. A dozen coming to me and spending a fortune to get it, I think. Uh, yeah, I, this is my favourite one of the lineup for sure. Do you have a does? I had six. Oh, I had a does. Oh, I had a does. Oh, I was close. I was, I was really close. Uh, so how much did you guys say it was worth? I uh, said 50 bones. I said 65. I had 50. Oh, I'm getting a dozen. Bargain. That is a bargain if it's $32. $32. 32. Really? Oh wow. What the fuck is That's this? Not a, oh, it is. Product wine of Australia. What is that? Shari La. 2020 Vermentino from Swan, Swan Valley. Dude, Swan is hitting hard. That is insane. Look Holy the shit. Bits in it. Oh yeah, she nailed it. Look at the bits in it. But cool wine. Great wine. Ex what? Exceptional value. Now, uh, up onto wine number five. Oh, it was, yeah, it's pretty good. 50 bucks, six bottles. How much price? I got 50 bucks. Yeah! Let's go, baby! You learned wine, Brendo. What's it's good? It's definitely not narrow. It's not <laughs> narrow at 80 bucks. Can't be narrow. Castagna, old school. Syrah. Beechworth, Syrah. Genesis Syrah. He's bang on. Uh, uh, I wasn't bang on. I said McLaren Vale. McLaren Vale. Uh, but I said everything but else. But still, still, definitely Syrah. Really high acid. The last wine. Again, I was all about because I think it's just a hell of a lot of fun. Yeah. yeah. But it I was any more with it. It is a beautiful yeah. color. 
There is something. Someone's salmon. Some pure like coral about this. salmon, like the color of perfume that James Bond's mistresses wear. Yes, that's the best one. Yes. All right, Lockie. What price are we at? Oh, oh well done, Brendo. Oh, you're back. Bad, Just, eh? What do we got? What do we got? Oh, Nick Spencer. Yes. It was Aussie. Nice. And from Canberra. Love oh, it. Lauren Bateman for someone in New South Wales. Yeah. Um, Fantastic. Yeah, Grenache, Sangiovese, Graciano, and Merlot grown to hilltops uh, in southern New South Wales. Um, it's a but, lovely colour. That is such a pretty wine. Yeah, it's a really pretty wine. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Guys, thank you so much for chiming in this week. Hope you've enjoyed. Until then, we'll be here. Bye. See you on Discord. <laughs>